distinguished uh, friends and colleagues, uh, President Reichman, uh, it's a great honor to be here in the State of Israel. Uh, it's my second visit here, actually, in the course of this year. Uh, and in particular, it's a privilege to be invited here to the uh, ICT's annual gathering, uh, which is a very significant landmark on the global counterterrorism landscape, where so many distinguished experts uh, and officials from around the world um, are here uh, to exchange experiences. Uh, and certainly we at the United Nations, and I personally, am already benefiting a great deal from this uh, global interaction. Um, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me sta start my thanking, in particular, the uh, ICT uh, and the ICD for um, uh, inviting, as I said, not only me personally, but also the United Nations to share with you uh, some of the work that we're doing around the world uh, in support of governments and member states as they deal with the threat of counterterrorism. Um, and I would particularly like to thank my good friend, Professor Gano, who I am happy to also say is a member of our UN counterterrorism uh, advisory uh, uh, team uh, that we have mobilized uh, to assist governments, uh, of which there are some 81 experts, and we are very happy that he is one of them. I'd also like to commend the ICT for the um, excellent work uh, that they are, uh, have been doing around the world, um, and uh, in particular the leadership uh, that uh, Professor Gano and his colleagues uh, have, been, um, uh, ha have been showing. Uh, the ceremony that we all attended yesterday on the occasion, on the sad occasion of the 15th anniversary of 9-11 was a particularly moving ceremony, uh, and uh, it is indeed fitting that we should focus in particular on the plight of victims of terrorism. Uh, as the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Mr. Ban Ki-moon, uh, has said, far too many victims of terrorism all over the world have suffered in silence uh, a neglect that compounds their trauma and wounds. Remembering that victims are a central component of our counterterrorism efforts is fundamental. Victims of terrorism uh, can count on the solidarity and support of the United Nations. For 16 years, the ICT uh, World Summit on Counterterrorism has been a valuable uh, annual event, uh, and those of us working on counterterrorism uh, believe that the efforts that it is undertaking is helping to make the world a safer place. As we celebrate the ICT's 20th anniversary, I am convinced that the conference will continue to be an important forum for policymakers and security professionals from around the world for many years to come. It provides an excellent annual opportunity to discuss the most pressing issues of the evolving terrorist landscape and strengthens the international counterterrorism uh, cooperation. Distinguished delegates, if we analyze these two dimensions, um, uh, and despite the international community's efforts, we need to recognize and admit that the level of international co counterterrorism cooperation has not been up to par to the danger that transnational terrorism poses to the world today. I want to repeat this point, that the level of international cooperation has not been up to par to the level, the growing danger that transnational terrorism poses uh, to the international community. And that is a theme that I want to stress uh, in today's presentation, the need for us to step up international cooperation to meet the growing danger of transnational terrorism. For this reason, in his recent report on the implementation of the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy, and let me stress here, ladies and gentlemen, there is a universal document that all countries, 
including the State of Israel, have subscribed to and signed up to the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy that was adopted 10 years ago by consensus. It offers a very comprehensive and purposeful international uh, framework for cooperation uh, in, a, in, in order to address both the prevention of violent extremism uh, and counterterrorism. Building on the recommendations of the Secretary General's recent report to the General Assembly, uh, the General Assembly reviewed the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy, as I said, on its 10th anniversary, uh, and uh, during the course of uh, uh, two months ago in July, uh, and the review marked uh, a new consensus by the General Assembly to address not only the continuing threats, but also the new and emerging threats uh, to, uh, 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 around the world of the, of the kind that we've been seeing recently. The review, which, which culminated in the adoption of a new consensus resolution, ARS 7291, has clearly demonstrated that the basic tenets of the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy, especially its focus on international cooperation, is even more relevant today than 10 years ago. At the same time, by recognizing the importance of preventing, going upstream, preventing violent extremism as and when conducive to terrorism, member states also provided the basis for the implementation of the recommendations of the Secretary General's plan of action to prevent violent extremism, thus stressing the importance of prevention of going further, as I said, upstream. Security and military measures against terrorism are of course important, but also need to be complemented with preventive actions that address the drivers of violent extremism. I state the obvious, forgive me, but when it comes to actual practice, that has not been uh, really the focus. And that is why the Secretary General felt that the time has come to mobilize the international community to think prevention, which is a leitmotiv of the work of the United Nations in general when it comes to conflicts, but to particularly focus upstream when we look at the drivers of violent extremism as and when they're conducive to terrorism. Distinguished friends and colleagues, the threat emanating from terrorist groups such as ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, and many other transnational terrorist groups is a direct assault on international peace and security. Sustainable development, human rights, and humanitarian action, the four main pillars of the work of the United Nations and the international community. Despite recent military successes against these terrorist groups, this threat, the transnational threat of terrorism, continues to grow exponentially and it is becoming more serious, and it is diversifying in new directions. Groups like ISIS continue to control territory and resources and have adopted quickly their tactics to demonstrate their ability to conduct complex multi-stage attacks out, outside and inside conflict zones. At the same time, they are increasing the role of affiliated groups and partnering with criminal organizations while maintaining what the United Nations ISIL Al-Qaeda Analytic Support and Sanctions Monitoring Team has termed, quote-unquote, strategic competition and tactical cooperation between terrorist groups. Furthermore, the new generation of terrorist groups is constantly introducing innovations, demonstrating their strategic and operational flexibility, new recruitment and propaganda strategies, the skillful misuse of information and communications technology, broken travel and use of false, altered and fraudulently obtained travel documents, diversifying financial re uh, streams and advanced tactics in international um, terror uh, schemes. Regarding the latter, there has been an increasing trend towards attacks that cost little and require minimal training and planning, but which nonetheless have significant impacts. Terrorism has become more likely to operate, uh, terrorists have become more likely to operate alone or in small groups, inspired rather than directed by high profile terrorist organizations to attack at a time and place 
of each terrorist choosing, rendering detection virtually impossible. Additionally, due to military uh, uh, pressures in conflict uh, zones, the areas of foreign terrorist fighters returning to their countries of origin or third num countries potentially intending to perpetrate attacks in combination with those being radicalized within those countries presents a new and growing challenge to member states. For example, some European member states have indicated that a significant number of foreign terrorist fighters, between 10 and 30%, who travel to conflict zones have now returned. The use of social media is also strengthening relationships between foreign terrorist fighters, a situation that may lay foundation to future transnational networks amongst veteran fighters. Notwithstanding battlefield and financial setbacks, terrorist groups, particularly ISIS, continue to re reassert themselves in cyberspace, radicalizing, recruiting, recruiting, and raising funds. Terrorists and violent extremist groups uh, in particular in regard to communications on the dark web or through encrypted messaging applications have also increased, making, detect making detection and investigation of terrorist cases much more difficult. Extremely alarming is the possible launch of cyber or physical attacks to critical infrastructure and the terrorist use of weapons of mass destruction, WMDs, including chemical, biological, and radio, uh, ra radionuclear material, CBRNs, as, as it's called. So what does this mean um, in regard to these growing transnational threats, ladies and gentlemen? Over the past decade, transnational terrorist groups have generally found it easier to survive than those with a more local agenda, which suggests that international cooperation has been less effective than national action. This deficit and today's evolving transnational threats call for stronger international collaboration to effectively prevent violent extremism and counterterrorism. The United Nations is well positioned to enhance collaboration at the national, regional, and global levels. Its universal membership provides it with an unparalleled convening authority that can be harnessed to build political momentum for stronger international cooperation in specific areas of counterterrorism. And in that regard, to leverage this comparative advantage, it is crucial that member states mobilize financial, technical assistance resources to support UN counterterrorism capacity building efforts in the most affected countries and regions. The United Nations has also been at the forefront of developing the international normative and legal framework to address terrorism through stronger international cooperation. The framework, this international framework, this international legal framework, includes the relevant international conventions and protocols relating to terrorism and human rights. The UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy and the relevant General Assembly and Security Council resolutions. Full implementation of this international legal framework by all member states would greatly contribute to strengthening international counterterrorism cooperation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in, this, in the face of the continued terrorist and violent extremist threat, the international community needs to unite and to be more creative, more proactive, and more effective. It needs to focus on impact going beyond the rhetoric of cooperation into the reality of meaningful collaboration. To enable dialogue and cooperation, we must first work to prevent and resolve conflicts. As the Secretary General of the United Nations has stated, quote, prolonged and unresolved conflicts tend to provide fertile ground for violent extremism. In many parts of the world, the United Nations is supporting efforts to mediate and resolve protracted conflicts in order to address this challenge. Operationally, strengthening cooperation means improving the exchange of information and actionable inter intelligence, both qualitatively and quantitatively between relevant national entities with counterterrorism responsibilities and between these entities 
and their international counterparts. It also means disseminating best practices among policymakers and counterterrorism practice practitioners, including the use of counterterrorism databases such as Interpol's. These practices are crucial if we want to succeed in addressing pressing transnational threats such as the foreign terrorist fighters phenomenon. We must also redouble our common efforts to prevent terrorists from acquiring funds and resources as they are used not only for operational needs, but also for propaganda, recruitment, and training. Effective suppression of terrorist financing, comprehensively uh, debilitating terrorist operations, and the spread of violent extremism. To achieve this goal, greater public-private engagement and actionable information sharing between financial intelligence experts would be crucial to more to, to more easily identify terrorist financing risk indicators and sources of funds or goods that could be used by terrorists. Strong criminal justice mechanisms compliant with human rights and the rule of law are fundamental also to successfully investigate and bring to justice the perpetrators of terrorist acts. The international legal framework against terrorism provides significant tools to investigators, prosecutors, and judges to strengthen criminal justice responses to terrorism. Interagency coordination and public-private partnerships, as I mentioned earlier, are of equal importance for safeguarding critical infrastructure, including the essential functions of government and industry from the threat of cyber terrorism. In addressing these threats, prevention must be our primary goal. The Secretary General's plan of action to prevent violent extremism puts forward a comprehensive and balanced approach for concerted action to address the drivers of violent extremism at the global, regional, and national levels. For this reason, as I mentioned earlier, we during, at the United Nations, during the course of the coming year, are going to be working extremely hard with all our partners in the international community to see how we can implement the Secretary General's Plan of Action, which, as I said, was adopted recently by consensus through a United Nations General Assembly resolution. By conclusion, distinguished friends and colleagues, through the coordinating role of the United Nations, our own UN Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force, working with all the other UN entities, 38 UN entities, uh, that are part of the UN Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force, we are stepping up our efforts to strengthen international cooperation to address, as I said, the serious deficit uh, in international collaboration in regard to the growing transnational threat that, that global terrorist groups such as ISIS pose. Uh, and we look to uh, collaboration with centers such as ICT, the good work that is being done here, and to all of you, the different experts that have assembled here from around the world in how we can bring together, under the roof of the United Nations, stronger and more effective collaboration that at the end can bring more impact uh, uh, on the ground where it really matters. So thank you. I'm very honored to have spoken here, and I look forward very much to listening and learning from all of you who are assembled at this very august conference. Thank you very much indeed.